Good day, everyone. I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. Today, we will be looking at a KPU Mathematics Unit 1 question, right, which is bijective functions in module one of the syllabus, which is basic algebra and functions, all right? And the topic that we'll be looking at is bijective function. So here we have a question. Let x be the set of real numbers excluding one and y be the set of real numbers excluding two, right? In other words, x is equal to the set of real numbers excluding one and y is equal to the set of real numbers excluding two. That is how we we'll write it in set notation form, all right? So the function f from x to y is defined by f of x is equal to 2x over x minus 1. Determine whether the function f is bijective. All right, so just to remind you what bijective functions are, bijective functions mean that the function is injective and surjective. All right, so we we'll first need to prove that the function is injective. And then we need to prove that the function is also surjective, all right? And just to remind you, x here is the domain, which is the set of real numbers excluding one, and y is the codomain, which is the set of real numbers excluding two, all right? Please remember not to confuse codomain and range. Range is a subset of this, is a subset of the codomain, all right? Good. So let us get into the question here now. So we first need to prove that it is injective, right? We need to first prove that f of x is injective. So what I'm gonna do here now is to let two elements be a member of the set of real numbers excluding one, which is the domain, all right? So just to remind you what injective functions are, injective functions mean that you have two different elements in the domain and those two elements in the domain map onto different y values right different y values in the codomain all right so we normally prove the construct positive of that statement meaning that we take two elements in the domain and we try to prove that um, the two y values will be equal, all right? So let us do that now. So let x1 and x2 be a member of the domain, which is x, and assume that f of x1 is equal to f of x2. All right, you can choose any letter that you wish. You don't necessarily have to choose X1 and X2. All right, you can choose A and B, P and Q, it doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna assume that F of X1 is equal to F of X2. In other words, what we're saying, in other words, what we're saying is that 2X1, and I'm going to divide that by x1 minus 1, and that is equal to 2x2. And I'm dividing that by x2 minus 1. All right. So, in case you didn't catch that, let me just scroll back up. So, what we'll do is for f of x1, we just substitute x1 wherever we say x into the function. All right, so we get 2x1 over x1 minus 1. And for f of x2, we substitute x2 into the function wherever we say x. So we get 2x2 over x2 minus 1. All right, so what we're trying to prove here is that x1 is going to be equal to x2, right? That's the aim. So what I'm going to do is cross multiply. All right, when I cross multiply, I will get 2x1 multiplied by x2 minus 1, 
and that is equal to 2x2 multiplied by x1 minus 1. All right? So I basically cross multiply and I get that step there. All right? So what I'm going to do now is to expand the brackets. So what I will have now is 2x1, x2, right? And 2x1 times a negative 1 will give me a negative 2x1. And that is equal to 2x2 times x1. That's the same as 2x1 times x2. 2x2 times negative 1 is the same as negative 2x2, all right? And then now, clearly, you can see that the 2x1, x2 will cancel out with the 2x1, x2 here, right? Because whatever side I can bring them over on, one will be negative and the other will be positive, right? So those two can cancel out. So what I have now is a negative 2x1, which is equal to a negative 2x2, all right? And clearly, you can divide both sides of that equation by a negative 2. So you will get a x1 is equal to x2. All right? Now, that was our aim, to get x1 being equal to x2. Once you can get x1 being equal to x2 only, it means that the function is injective. All right? So let me just write a statement now here f of x1 equals f of x2 implies that x1 is equal to x2 for all x1, x2, which is a member of the domain, which is x. All right? Therefore, therefore the function f so the function f is injective, all right? And remember that injective functions are also called one-to-one, -one. all right? So we have successfully proven that the function f is injective. Now we need to prove if the function is surjective, right? That's the next step. So let us scroll down here. So, what I'm going to do now is let y be an arbitrary, let y be an arbitrary element in the codomain, right, which is capital Y, and f of x is equal to y. All right, f of x is equal to y. In other words, what we're saying is that 2x, right, the function that they gave us, which is 2x divided by x minus 1 is equal to y. All right? You don't necessarily have to choose y. You can choose any letter. So let me just refresh your memory on, on what a surjective function is. The surjective function means that the codomain and the range are equal. All right? Good. So if you should multiply both sides of the equation by x minus one, what we will have is a two x being equal to y times x minus one, all right? If I should distribute the y inside, I will get two x being equal to x y minus y, all right? Good. Now, my aim here is basically to express x in terms of y, meaning that I want to make x the subject of this equation, all right? So I'm gonna carry over this x, y to the left-hand side. It would turn a negative. So I will have a two x minus an x, y, and that is equal to a negative y, all right? Now, in order to get y by itself, what I can do is factor out a x. So in brackets, I will have a two minus y, and that is equal to negative y. All right, let me scroll down. So I want x by itself. I can now divide both sides of the equation by what is inside the bracket, which is 2 minus y. So therefore, x would be equal to negative y. And I'm going to divide that expression by 2 minus y. 
All right. So now what I'm going to do is just write down. I'm going to write down what X and Y was. All right. Let's go back to it. X is a set of real numbers excluding one. All right. So let me just write it down here in blue. X is equal to the set of real numbers excluding one. And what was Y? Y is a set of real numbers excluding two. All right. So Y is equal to the set of real numbers excluding two. Okay, good. Now, if you should observe this equation, right? X is equal to negative Y over two minus Y, right? Whatever value I put in for Y, right? Except two, right? I can't put in two. So any value that I put in for Y, otherwise from two, right? I will always get an X value. If I put in zero, I get zero, right? If I put in one, I get negative one over two minus one, which is the same as negative one. So any value, right? With a fraction like a half or any rational number such as square root two, right? Any number except two, right? I will always get an X value, right? I will always get an X value otherwise from one. All right, that is what we have. So I'm gonna write a statement now based on what we just said. So this is gonna be the statement. So clearly, right, clearly for all y, right, for all y values in the codomain x, which is equal to negative y divided by divided by two minus y is going to be a member of the domain, which is capital X, all right? So that means that the function is surjective, all right? So therefore, for all, for all y in the codomain, right, there exists, there exists an X, which is a member of the domain. That is what we're saying here, such that, such that F of X is going to be equal to Y, all right? So this basically means that if it should substitute negative Y over two minus Y back into the original function, you will get Y as the output, all right? And I will have a final statement now that says, hence, the function, right, based on what we have just said previously, the function f is surjective. All right? Now, I will now write another statement because remember that the original question said, determine if the function f is bijective. So we can now say, since, the function, since the function f is injective and surjective, it implies that the function f, right, it implies that the function f is bijective, all right? That is my statement. And this function is clearly bijective, all right? So that is it for today. Just showing you how we need to prove that a function is bijective, right? You need to prove that it is one-to-one, -one, right? Or injective, and we need to prove that the function is onto otherwise called surjective, right? I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica and mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.